Yeah, Colin Griffiths, full time officer with the GMB Trade Union. Colin, just explain to me why your workers are out on strike today at the Spire. Because uh, the terms and conditions are being attacked uh, by Spire Housing Management. Uh, some people are losing over £5,000 a year. Uh, uh, an introduction of uh, extra working hours, putting the sick pay scheme, and uh, making the terms and conditions really, really going back in time. What's the mood like amongst your members? Very strong. Uh, 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 you know, again, this is our first year of strike and there's been a, a good turnout. But the, the members uh, are really upset and angry uh, because they're the only individuals that are being affected by it. Uh, the rest of the workforce aren't being attacked, uh, referenced in these terms and conditions. So it's just the maintenance people, uh, the office staff aren't being attacked, uh, the management people aren't being attacked in their terms and conditions, just the maintenance people. The management claim they're being fair with you. Well, they're not really being fair with me because uh, Spire Housing and other surplus and the actual thing is around that year has been bad. So it's not for financial reasons. The companies say that it's to do with uh, efficiencies and say it's to do with key buzzwords. But if you look on the Spire website, you'll find maintenance departments are actually hitting the targets and in some cases actually exceeding their targets. So what they have said to us on the consultation, I believe, is smoke screens and mirrors. I think it's just a way to attack people's terms and conditions, their salaries and their pensions. How long can your workers keep this up for? It can't be easy for them to come out on strike in today's day and age. It's, it's very difficult because obviously strike action is the last resort, not the first. Now we've been in talks with the spy, but they seem hell-bent on attacking these terms and conditions. And it is the last resort, but you have to draw a line under the sand and say that you prefer to fight for your terms and conditions. And this is the only option that we've got left to fight for terms and conditions. Any more strikes planned in the near future? We've got uh, planned another three uh, strike dates, uh, but we're, we're quite open to talks with the company. But what the company have to realise, if you're going to cut a working man's salary by about £3,000, £5,000 per year, that's going to have a devastating effect uh, on the household. And if you live in Stone on trend uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and wages are key, it's key to this area, we shouldn't be racing to the bottom. Actually, we should take pride and actually race to the top of terms and conditions. What would your message be to management then? My message to management was to be to hold the, hold, hold the, the process of trying to make these changes take place, uh, sit down around the table with the trade unions and come up with a, a solution to this problem. So we, we would call a strike off tomorrow if the management would hold on to these attacks on the terms and conditions, allow it to negotiate, and that way we can come up to a solution. Because strike's never the answer, but it is the last resort. Is the light at the end of the tunnel, would you say? At this current, at this current time, I wouldn't say there is because the hell bent on these terms and conditions. But we're quite flexible and we're quite prepared to go around the table, obviously to talk to the management to get a solution to the problem. But what we're not going to be is we're not going to be bullied and pushed around by the management, and that doesn't work for us. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Cheers for